Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, we go into the minds of the Supreme Court justices to make some sense of their judgment on the true and proper interpretation of Article 97.1 GNH. That's coming up next here on Ghana Tonight and also in relation to the vacant parliamentary seats controversy. In fact, this is one that a number of you have been waiting for. The said reasoned ruling of the Justice of the Supreme Court um, on this particular case. They brought finality to the true and proper meaning of Article 97 GNH, that's one GNH, and also the full details of it we have about 109 pages, which we're going to tease out the, the, the major and the standout, uh, as, as it were, uh, areas within this 109-page ruling of the judges of the Supreme Court, explaining the circumstances under which a member of parliament is deemed to have vacated their seats according to the 5-2 majority decision of the House. An MP can only be considered to have vacated their seat if they change their political identity and remain in parliament under the new identity. You want to understand this? Follow us closely. Dennis Barberi Wadam Esquire is joining me right now. Now, we, we established, Dennis, good to have you, um, those who ruled in favor of the plaintiff and those who ruled against. Yes. Let's, let's establish it from there again. So five, two, and these are the five um, justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiff, the chief justice, the presiding justice, Justice Getu Tukono, Justice Mariama Ousu, Justice Kwame Esedu mm -hmm. uh, Adibu, Justice Yao Dakwasari, he wrote the majority, um, the majority opinion, and then Justice Yao Jeu. So these are the five justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiff. Now the two who dissented, Justice Amadu Tanku and then Justice Errol, uh, Loveless Johnson. So, and their, their primary point of dissension was was on the matter of jurisdiction. On matter of jurisdiction, yes. Fair, fair. But let's start with the majority opinion. Great stuff. Yes, even though all of them are aligned and they are on the side of the plaintiff, mm -hmm. um, Justice Asiedu had to also write a concurring opinion. What it means is that even though he's on their side, he also has some distinction that meant that it had to be a standalone. I see. So, I mean, they dealt extensively with the matter of jurisdiction because when they were filing the memorandum of issues, the AG, as part of the memorandum of issues, set that down for determination. Mm. Now, the question was whether or not the case was properly before the Supreme Court and if the Supreme Court had that jurisdiction to hear the matter. That's right. That had come up already. And then the Supreme, uh, the Attorney General was in person on the seven-member panel to say that, yes, indeed, there was jurisdiction because the five had already determined that matter in the applications. So you recall that when the, the Speaker of Parliament made his application to vacate the ruling of the, 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 the Supreme Court itself, mm -hmm. the matter of jurisdiction came up and they decided. That's right. So the Attorney General was simply saying when the matter of jurisdiction came up again on the substantive matter, mm -hmm. that this matter has already been settled on. Let's go on so that it will be taken that you have jurisdiction to hear out. Of course, not all of them agreed. Mm -hmm. Tanko, in particular, did not find favor in that particular argument because he thought that jurisdiction as it related to the application was different from as it related to the substantive matter. Mm -hmm. And he sought to distinguish why they still needed to consider the matter of jurisdiction. But of course, they looked at the issue of jurisdiction. These five agreed that indeed they had jurisdiction to hear the matter. These two disagreed or they dissented right now into the other uh, the substance of the matter itself mm -hmm. i mean the case as to what exactly article 97 1 really? g and h actually means that's why it gets interesting it gets interesting because the justices took their time to break the article down or the provision down just so they could interpret it in a manner that we all can follow right but at the end of the day, what essentially stood out and which they took their time to actually tease out was that when you want to appreciate this particular provision, it has to be seen in a certain sense. That one, 
an MP, for an MP to be deemed to have vacated his or her seat, that MP must have left his party to leave your party. And that is the party on whose ticket you came into the house. So, for instance, so, well, well they, so Cynthia Morrison came on a ticket of the, the MPP. MPP. So she must have left the MPP. As in resigned from the party. Yes. Okay. But we'll, well get into so the they did not go into that, into that, but per the provision, there is leaving the party and joining another party. So the contention is that, or the argument made is that you must have left the party and then joined another party. And then seeking to remain in parliament on the ticket of the new party that you have joined. Mm. So let's say, for instance, you, as an N MPP member, you left MPP, I mean, you came to parliament on the ticket of MPP, you left the MPP, and then you join, say, NDC, and you seek to remain in parliament with, on the ticket of the NDC. In that case, you would have been deemed to vacate your seat. Not, not that you have the intention of contesting no. uh, in 2024 as an independent candidate. So they, this case they actually the make the, the point that leaving the party and joining another party has to be seen to be contemporaneous. It means that it has to be now. And the definition of parliament, as the ju justices have explained, is within the period of four years. Mm -hmm. So this particular parliament has a lifespan, right. which was from 7 January 2021. It will end on the sixth of January 2025. So within that period of time, if you change your identity in the house and you seek to still be in the house on a new identity, that would not allow you. So that's how come they summarize it in this. And this is in respect of the each, which applies to members who came on the ticket of parliament, I mean, okay. on the ticket of political parties. That one, um, so yes, it begins here, that an MP must vacate his seat if he leaves the party under which he was elected to join another party or become independent and seeks to remain in parliament and the new identity. So for them, these are the elements that need to be met for one to be deemed to have vacated a seat if you came to parliament on the ticket of a political party. In respect of the H, which applies to independent candidates, mm -hmm. these are the elements that were formulated by the Supreme Court in aiding us to understand what the provision means. That one, an independent candidate must vacate his seat if he joins a political party in parliament mm -hmm. and seeks to remain in parliament under his new political status. It does not apply to an intention to contest a future election. After explaining this, they took their time again to explain what the implications of what the speaker did would mean. Tell us about it. They make the argument that it will affect, affect the rights of MPs to have a choice, that MPs, even though they may have come to parliament on a ticket of a certain party, they still have that right to make a choice as to which party they want to, to, to ride on mm -hmm. in the next election. So if they make that decision for a next parliament, that should not be seen to be a vacation of their seats. They also make an interesting point about how parliamentarians have a social contract with their constituents and not with political parties. I see, but they came into parliament on a ticket of a political party. But it? they were elected by constituents and they are accountable to the constituents. I see. So does that mean that the political party then doesn't have a say in whatever the, the person says? But they still make a point that it should not be left in the hands of the political party to decide the parliamentary imbalances with internal party decisions. Does this then negate the provision in the MPP constitution specifically about the forfeiture of the membership? Because if you look at the constitution of the MPP, they state, and we're going to put that constitution of the MPP on the screen in a bit right now, that you, you automatically forfeit your membership if you, as a, a sitting MP, decide to either contest on the ticket of another political party or go independent. The automaticity of that constitutional provision kicks in immediately you decide you decide to. Unfortunately, that did not come out expressly. But when you read in between the lines of what they said about not leaving this decision in the hands of internal um, party decisions to be made as to altering the composition of parliament, you begin to appreciate that the Supreme Court wants to take that power 
of the political parties being able to influence the shape of parliament. So they make that case of the connection between the member of parliament and the constituents rather than that connection between the member of parliament and the party that brought that particular part, uh, uh, candidate into, into parliament. Because that is the point you make is very important underscoring this, the, the reasoning behind this particular part of the ruling because what we have seen is that, for instance, the parties have an influence in who even becomes a leader of the various caucuses in parliament, right? And then now you are saying that based on this ruling, the Supreme Court is essentially saying that the political party on which an MP is elected yes. cannot dictate. They should not be dictated to. As to whether or not the person is fit to represent yes. the constituents depending on the person's decision to either go independent or otherwise. But let's look, let's look at the MPP constitution, right? And yes. Then I'll, I'll and even you know, before, on, on okay, that after point. that, I'll show you something interesting. Perfect. Now, let's look at this. This is what the MPP constitution says, and let's put it on the screen right now. It says, expulsion of a member. A member may be expelled from the party, and it, it goes on and on. And if I, let's flip to the next one. It says, in the next, the third point, it says, for feature of membership, a member of the party who stands as an independent candidate against the officially elected member of the party or who joins or declares his or her support for another political party or for an independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general election or by election automatically forfeits his or her membership of the party so this one clearly captures the punishment for an intention but the Supreme Court says that the intention cannot be punished in the current parliament. Because if you look at it, look, look at the notice of poll of all those who have decided to go independent, right? And we have it. This is the notice of, of poll in the Suhum constituency. The incumbent member of parliament, Kojo Asante, on the ticket of the MPP, who decided to go independent, is there. This is how the, the, the polling, that's the ballot paper is going to appear. You have Frank Esiedu, but Queen, Botozwa. Of the MPP, the sponsored candidate of the party is there, Prince Addo, the NDC candidate, Emmanuel Riafi, and Koja Sante, the incumbent NPP MP is going independent. Let's look at let's look at the next one. The next one as well is uh, the case of Cynthia Morrison in the central region. This Aguna West, Christopher Atta, the sponsored MPP candidate is there, and Asinofori Dangbe of the NDC, and then Cynthia Mamle Morrison is there as well, as the incumbent MP on the ticket of the MPP and going independent. Let's look at Amenfis Central. Amenfis Central, you have Peter Kwachaka there as well. So the Supreme Court says... No. So this is in respect of the next parliament. This has nothing to do with the current parliament. And when you look at what they say are the elements that they formulated, that one, the MP must leave the party under which he was or she was elected, so let's, let's do the analysis. Mm -hmm. Has any of those MPs left their parties as we speak? Do we know? Well, the MPP constitution says they will automatically leave if they decide to contest as independent candidates. That would be a matter for the NDC. I mean, sorry, the MPP to deal with. In any case, I'll show you, we'll go back into history, and the Supreme Court has helped us to see that there have been instances where members of parliament declared their intention or filed nominations to contest as independent candidates, mm -hmm. and they were still in parliament. Not Perfect. one MP, not two MPs, not three, as many as five of them. Perfect. The Supreme Court took judicial notice of that. Let's and see let that. me show you that real quickly. So here we go. And as far as 1996, there was an independent member of parliament for Kintampo, Gladys Insao. She was re-elected in 1996 on the NDC ticket. She entered parliament as an independent candidate. She did not lose her seats. In 2004, you had Dr. William Akoto, MPP MP for New Ebrim, from 2001 to 2004. He retained his seat while running as an independent candidate in the 2004 elections. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end there. It continues. This is a very popular one. Joe Weiss. Yes. First, first entered parliament speaker. as an independent candidate for Bekwai. 2009 to 2012. He later contested the election in 2012 to be re-elected on the ticket of the MPP. He didn't lose his seat. The only person who unfortunately lost his seat is the was the former MP. Now there's a final one. 
he was also an, in, an independent candidate. He contested the primaries while he was an in, MPP primaries, while he was an independent candidate in, 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 in parliament. Unfortunately for him, he lost the primary. The argument made then was all these were in respect of future elections, so they could not have been deemed to have vacated their seats. You know what? Stay the steam on this, and, and let's bring in um, Tamaklo. Godwin Tamaklo is a, is, a, is a private legal practitioner. He is also uh, the director of legal for the NDC. He's been following this case quite closely as well. Uh, Council, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And uh, good evening to your viewers. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, and if you can go back a bit for us um, so we get the full image of you. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight, also live on 3FM 92.7. Essentially, uh, you heard what Dennis has laid out, um, what the reasoning behind those who ruled in favor of the plaintiff, the Supreme Court justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiffs put out, that the only plausible conclusion which must necessarily flow from a holistic and contextual reading of 97, 1 GNH is that an MP seat shall be vacated upon departure from the cohort of his elected party in parliament to join another party in parliament while seeking to re remain in that parliament as a member of the new party, Council. Okay, so <clears throat> I think it's important that uh, um, your colleague, he's Dennis, right? If you, if you could sit back a bit for me, yes. Great. I mean, he's Dennis, is that correct? Yes, yes, yes that's right. Good. So you see, I think he makes a few more uh, matters. He mixes up a few issues that needs to be corrected. So in Ghana, getting into parliament is by two ways. Either as an independent candidate or sponsored by a political party. Now, when you are sponsored by a political party, you pick the identity of that political party. So you even see that in the notice of hope, it is not just the picture of that individual. You also have the political party and its symbol that is sponsoring the person. When you are an independent candidate, you don't go through that kind of association. Now, it's important, and I like the way you raised the, the Article 9 of the MPP Constitution. Very instructive. Because, you see, what Article 9 of the MPP Constitution says is simple. Now, once the MPP has the officially elected parliamentary candidate, and you take the step of becoming an independent candidate, the party constitution says you forfeit your membership automatically. Now, you see, there's a history to Article 97. And oftentimes, when the Supreme Court has the opportunity to interpret our Constitution, the fundamental reasoning is that the Constitution is a living organism, but it also mirrors our history. What, therefore, is our history? If you recall, in 1979, the parliament that took its life from 1979 had Victor Usu as the leader of the opposition there against Lima. Now, two principal members of Victor Uso's party, that is, Loya Kwekuba and J.H. Usua Champo, came on the ticket of Victor Uso's party. They got into parliament, and one day said they were no longer members of Victor Uso's party. However, they said they want to remain in parliament. And in fact, they remain in parliament until the coup, until the coup of 1981. So when we were drafting the 1992 constitution, mindful of the events of 1979, we introduced Article 97, 1, G, and H to correct and to kill that 1979 mystery, where the person leaves the political party that brought him and still want to remain and do business. So this time around, we introduce the clause back case, your seat, and it's automatic. 
And so if you look at even the standing orders, standing order 18, the speaker only informed parliament of the occurrence of that vacancy. Nothing more, nothing else. So we need to understand that as a people, we have walked a journey from 79 till now. And so that what happened in 79, we do not want it to repeat itself. And so you notice that the Supreme Court, with the greatest respect, in seeking to interpret Articles 97, 1, G, and 8, had no records to our history and why for the 1992 Constitution we introduced those specific provisions. Two, the Constitution contemplates two things happening, and that is reference to Article 112. In Article 112, 5, and 6, he said that if the events in Article 97 happens six months be before the next election, then you can have a by-election. However, if it is just three months to the next election, then there's no opportunity for by-election. So the issue that people will be denied representation does not even arise. The framers of the Constitution cured it. Now, to the judgment itself, Alfred, okay. you will notice, reading from page four, the heading is facts. The lead author of the majority judgment, his lordship justice, Yao Asari Daku, in recounting the facts that originated this whole action, admitted that at the time when Afenyo Markin Honorable issued the writ out of the registry of the Supreme Court. Speaker has not taken any action. Now, if that is the case, then as at the day Afenyo Markin issued the writ, he was only seeking an opinion from the Supreme Court. That it is, is that, that is that is without. If, please go ahead. That is, if the writ was was not amended. As it were. And you, exactly. We, and you we, see, we, we don't have records of that, but that is even what and you I mean. see, And you see, Afenyo Markin and his lawyers, after Speaker informed the House of that decision, they didn't go back to the court to amend their pleadings to reflect these new facts, these new events. If they had done that, would we have known or... No, it's a matter of record. In fact, the judge himself concedes and one thing that you must understand, that the Supreme Court, with the greatest respect, doesn't operate like an octopus. You see, the octopus has many tentacles. So it goes everywhere looking for something to justify something. In this specific case, it's a court of record. The matter before the Supreme Court, as at the time it was giving judgment, were the pleadings, the writs, and the statement of case. The statement of case will recount the factual basis that is informing the invocation of the jurisdiction. Now remember that this is not an appeal. This is an original action pursuant to Article 2. Now what you need to ask yourself is, what is in Article 2? Article 2 says that if I come to the court alleging that Alfred had acted or had failed to act, so we use an act or omission, which contravenes an express provision of the Constitution, I can come to the court and invokes its original jurisdiction. Now, question is, on Monday, when Afenio Markin issued the writ out of the registry of the Supreme Court, has Speaker taken any decision? No. So where did the Supreme Court get those facts from? Okay, but the but, so, but and, and and that is why and that is why if you look at the minority opinion, his lordship justice uh, 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 Amadou uh, um, Tanku recognized that defect. He recognized the defect in that particular process, and in fact made this 
very important pronouncement. If you permit me, may I just read what he said? Briefly. Alfred, Briefly. Can I, can I Qu quickly, quickly, yes. He said, the court is not a court to elicit opinions or academic information, but settles life disputes. Therefore, where a contention brought before the court, especially if the same is anchored on the, on the invocation of the court's original jurisdiction, it's not life, it is fanciful or frivolous. Okay. It, is a waste, it is a waste of judicial economy for the court to entertain sin. Further, the court must not be seen to be hiding under its interpretative function to be making laws as if it were parliament. So you see, so his lordship justice Amadou Tanko realized quickly that the plaintiff here, Afenyo Makin, never came back to the court to amend the writ and the statement of case to now plead those new facts, which is the conduct of the speaker. And you see, that is why you notice that whereas the Supreme Court granted relief one, hmm? I mean the majority, granted relief one, they couldn't go further in making any further consequential orders. But well, because Counsel, but I mean, you, you saw Dennis make reference to the, the uh, precedents. In fact, five instances that the Supreme Court justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiff referenced. And out of those five instances, only one who suffered the consequence of losing his seat in the case of the former MP. And so, really, why should that be the only reference point for the justification of this this action by, by the speaker. No, but you see, that's it. You see, as far as the judgment is concerned, this point raised is immaterial. Why is that? No, because you see, when you go back to the reliefs which were attached to the rates, hmm, it simply creates an issue of futuristic or everything that is done is to the future. And that, for instance, if you move from independent to MPP, okay, that movement from independent to MPP, right, does not take effect now, except the election that you are going to contest. Okay. Meanwhile, Alfred, Alfred, if you pick your constitution, Article 97, you see by Article 97, the word tenor of members. That tenor obviously is just an aid to interpretation. That tenor is not futuristic. It is a now. Two, as we speak, hmm, the MPP, then MPP MP for Aguna West, Cynthia Morrison, hmm, having oh, taken oh. that post, having taken the positive step, hmm, of filing formally before the Electoral Commission her candidature to be independent hmm? by reason of Article 93 of the MPP Constitution. She is no longer an MPP member. So, with respect, you see a certain level of confusion in the judgment of the Supreme Court majority okay. because what it means is that you can wake up in the morning as an MPP member. By close of day in the evening, you are no longer an MPP member. But by reasoning of the Supreme Court, you can still remain in Parliament. Well, How is that even possible? When it is the party that sponsored you? Because, you see, this decision of the Supreme Court takes us back well, to well, well, So the Supreme Court puts, puts supremacy on the constituents represented no. by the MP. And non, and non necessarily no, the party who, 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 who sponsored him um, having no, to dictate there's no, the, the, see, the status of the see, person in parliament. Let me tell you if you are Fred, assuming you go to Keta, listen carefully, mm -hmm. or Keta South, 
and you say you are an MPP member, that alone can decide your future. If you go to Bantama and you say you are an MPP parliamentary candidate, or you say you are an NDC parliamentary candidate, that alone will decide your future. So to suggest even remotely that political party associations have no bearing with the greatest respect is to completely lose the game. Because, like I pointed out earlier, Article 97, 1, H, and G were specifically put in there to cure a problem. Now, Supreme Court has taken us back to 1979. Okay. So what it means is that by the reasoning of the majority Supreme Court judges, right. what it means is that you can actually leave your political party for whatever reason and still remain there. Or your party can say, so so and so person is no longer our member. I'll tell you what, th this, but, is, th th this is but just... Then, you can still remain in parliament for God knows. Okay. And that is where, and, and, and let me make another quick point. In 30, in, in, in 30 seconds, I need to round up on this quickly. Yes. yes, in 30 seconds. You also note that the speaker never filed his defense and statement of case more or less, right? However, the majority judges appears to take the view that the speaker raised an issue about their jurisdiction. Where from that? Okay. Where did they get that view from? Well, well counsel, this is the beginning of a, a number of days ahead of us that we're going to in interrogate and have conversations on various parts of this 109-page ruling. But I do appreciate your time for this initial part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate the opportunity. Godwin Edujit Tamaklo is private legal practitioner, also the director of legal for the NDC. Uh, Dennis, now, the, the, there's a, a quick point you want to make there, a very quick one. Well, it just had to do with the Supreme Court's position that Absolute. the attempt to take the power away from the political parties in determining the balance in parliament. And I quote what the Supreme Court says precisely. That Article 971G does not give political parties the power to disrupt the balance of parliament mm -hmm. by removing MPs based on internal party decisions. And that was precisely what the Supreme Court said in that particular respect. And the filing processes that the uh, council talks about, mm -hmm. it describes those as mere administrative processes that are required for every, uh, every um, election. election. So yes, those were addressed, all right. But what was essentially said was the fact that they do not want to leave that power in the hands of political parties to disrupt the balance of parliament. Okay, perfect. Now, this is a conversation that, look, we're, we're going to stay the steam on in the coming days in our subsequent bulletins here on TV3 and across all media journal platforms. And uh, stay with us here on Ghana Tonight, also on your election command center.